Uh, yeah, I'm going to largely be talking about Doncaster Please. this evening. You won't be um, running there, will you? Hmm? You won't be running away to Doncaster. Well, let's see. Let's see. Um, this is... So I just wanted to start with, with this. I'll, I'll leave it to you to read and not do that typical PowerPoint thing of read it for you. Uh, this is from uh, Crap Towns a book which was released by uh, the Idler movement, uh, a group who I normally love what they do, but uh, in, in the case of the Crap Towns, I thought it was a very cynical venture um, and also particularly um, irritating the fact that someone saw fit to, uh, to, to put Brighton in there. And this is, this is an attitude which I find um, comes up quite a lot amongst my peer group particularly amongst people who've been in Brighton for a long time. I've been here for 20 years, and I feel like we live in a bubble here, and uh, cynicism creeps in amongst a lot of my friends, particularly artists, who complain about the things that we don't have in the city. And to highlight all the great things that we do have in the city, I'd like to talk about Doncaster. Um, <laughs> next slide, please, Jonathan. I, uh, this is Doncaster. This is its cathedral. Doncaster's population is 400,000. That's considerably larger than Brighton. Uh, I was honoured to be asked to go and perform a one-man show in Doncaster a couple of weeks ago in the, in the theatre. The theatre is, is branching out. Doncaster Theatre has been there for many decades, but largely um, for, um, for the annual panto, which was put on by Doncaster's 12 out gay men. Um, but now they're, they're doing more, more events. And so I did a one-man show on a, on a Thursday night. Um, unfortunately, we only got 17 people in the audience. But I was told, and most of those are my family and friends. But I was told by the guy um, running the theatre that that was a pretty good turnout because people just don't go out on a Thursday in Doncaster. Um, and uh, and it's, you know, it's my favourite night out in, in Brighton. He was excited, though. He was excited at the fact that this new show was coming to Doncaster, and they couldn't wait because Doncaster had, nev Doncaster had never seen anything like this before, and it was going to be wild and amazing, and it was an evening of burlesque, and my eyes rolled. Um, and uh, I, I, so I grew up in Doncaster, and um, I d discovered by the time I was in my teens that I, I had a love of, of books and reading, and, and I did pretty well with my English lit O level, it was one of the few that I did very well with, but owing to um, certain misdemeanours that I won't go into right now, I was taken aside by the, the head of, of literature at the school and told that I wouldn't be doing English A level, would I, David? He said, looking me in the eyes, and I realised what he was saying, and so I didn't. Um, and, uh, but I, but this, this love of, of books was growing in me, and I wanted to read, I had a voracious appetite for books. But there was a problem in that um, Doncaster's um, bookshops were um, non-existent. There was not one single bookshop in the town. And so I took to stealing books from the book cupboard in Doncaster Comprehensive School, <coughs> where I had my dreaded violin lessons. For me, the, um, I, and I'm not proud of, of, of the theft, but for me, um, the most exciting place in Doncaster was a school book cupboard. Uh, next sli slide, please. Uh, this is the Robin Hood Airport. Doncaster has its own airport. Again, something that, uh, that we don't, don't have in, in, in Brighton. Uh, wh why is it called Robin Hood? Well, it's a little surprising because, because Doncaster isn't, isn't even in the same county as, um, as, as Sherwood Forest and the, and the stories of Robin Hood. In fact, there's been a lot of controversy over this, and, uh, and most people prefer to refer to it as Donny Airport. Um, but after doing a lot of research into this, it turns out that there is a connection with, uh, with, with Robin Hood and Doncaster. This is true. You can, you can uh, Wikipedia it if you want. Uh, and that is that in, uh, in, in the stories of Robin Hood that are recorded, in one uh, written account of the stories, there is a minor character called David of Doncaster who only appears for a few sentences in a story and the only thing we know about him was that he was a bit grumpy and he didn't have any ears. Uh, and that's all we know about David of Doncaster. And, and on this um, tender thread, uh, the, the airport was, was named Robin Hood Airport. 
Um, and, and I don't want to appear uh, cynical about, about Doncaster. I, want to, um, I, I still have a fondness for the place because I grew up there. Um, and, it's, and it's a regular um, English town. What I wanted to highlight was just that, you know, this is not atypical. Uh, this, is this, is, this is... Most of England, I think, is, is, is like Doncaster. It, it's homogenised. Uh, and there is not a lot of, of variety on offer in Doncaster. I came to Brighton in, in 1992 to discover that um, Brighton had, at its peak, just before I arrived, 42 independent bookshops. And, and if you want an account of the truly subversive and diverse um, nature of the town, I recommend reading, reading bookends. Um, and two of the great stories in this book are of um, the Public House Bookshop, which was here when I arrived, which had been here for 25 years and, and had entertained such people as William Burroughs, Alan Ginsberg, who compared it favourably with, with City Lights Bookshop, and Unicorn Books, which I think was gone, had gone by the time I arrived in, in, in Brighton, but Unicorn Books was regularly attacked by the National Front, um, and the, the, the owner occasionally arrested by the police for the subversive uh, material that was sold, um, for the gay literature that was sold, um, anarchist literature. And um, I think it's a very interesting story, actually, much more interesting than the mods and the rockers, uh, is, the, is the battle between, uh, between the right-wing extremists and, and Brighton <coughs> bookshop owners. And I know we don't have as many bookshops nowadays, but that isn't the fault of the town or the fact that the town is becoming less interesting but just because of the nature of, uh, of the way that we, that we buy, buy books. Twenty years on, um, I find that there's, there's the cynicism amongst my peers, as I said, for complaining about what we don't have. I, I hear my friends say that, that Brighton, Brighton should have a decent art gallery, but, but it doesn't, and it, it should have a repertory theatre, but, but it doesn't, and the library should sell some book, uh, should have some books in, but it, it barely does. Um, and, and yet, and yet w when I hear this, this criticism about, about this mediocrity of everything in Brighton being done in a, in a half assed way, and you know, there's this lethargy and it's all talk and no trousers, I, th I think about um, my, my last trip to Edinburgh Festival, where some of the best theatre that I saw came from Brighton. I think about the diverse and spectacular um, number of bands that we have here and, and how exceptional some of that music is. And, 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 and art as well. If you avoid Hanover during the art trail uh, in May, you'll find that the quality of the art in, uh, in Brighton is actually, is actually pretty good. I think that this town, we, we I live in Hanover, I, I speak with them, bitter experience. Um, I think that we punch above our weight in almost every field in a town which is not even the size of Doncaster. And I've got a few facts here. I've got to thank uh, uh, Rick Morris, who does um, the Only in Brighton tour, for providing uh, some, of the, uh, some of these facts. And this is, only, um, this is not a complete list of the things that we have to be proud for in Brighton. Okay, first of all, Brighton was voted to be the, the happiest place to live in the UK in 2008 in a survey. We have the first um, nudist beach, the first casino, we had the first mental health clinic in 1905, the first film industry, if you include Hove. Stomp began here. The first blue movie was shot in Brighton. We're the first city to ban rap music that offended gay people. We're the first city to spearhead, or we're the, the primary city to spearhead tattoo and piercing culture of, of, of the modern primitives. We had the first body shop in Brighton. The first civil partnerships in England were here. We have the first Green Party MP. The word shampoo entered the English language in Brighton. Uh, we have the UK's only mod shop, the UK's only garana bar, vegetarian shoe shop. We have the largest marina in Europe, but it is a bit shit. Um, <laughs> Um, sad to say, we have the most number of drug deaths in, in, in Brighton because you know this is a, it, this reflects the party lifestyle. But despite this, um, the oldest man in the world uh, came from Brighton, or for one month he was the oldest man in the world, which was in, in 2009 when he was uh, 113 years old and, and 40, 42 days. We have the second largest arts festival in the Northern Hemisphere. We have the Great Escape. We have Pride. We have Burning of the Clocks. We have Cine City, the Food Festival, Open Houses, Kent Town Carnival, the Digital Festival. We are the most godless city in the UK, with 27% of Brightonians claiming to have no religion. Uh, we also, conversely, have a thriving interest in spiritual matters. Um, we have the largest percentage of Jedi Knights uh, <laughs> in Brighton, according to a 2001 consensus. And uh, we also sell to Acker. In 2006, in 2006, Doncaster got its first bookshop. It's a small Waterstones on the second floor of the Arndale Centre. 
it got its bookshop because someone built a university uh, in Doncaster and it was felt that the students might want to <laughs> purchase some literature. The university is built on a roundabout and I've yet to work out how one actually accesses <laughs> the, the uni university. Um, Don Doncastrians make jokes about how very little goes on in the town. And in fact, the only, Brighton, the only Doncaster story that I'm able to come across is about the fact that there is no Doncaster story. Um, and that concerns, um, slide number, next slide please. Uh, that concerns um, Bernard Manning. Bernard Manning came to Doncaster in the, uh, in the 1980s to do a gig at the, uh, at the Catholic, uh, Catholic Club. And he came in early to, to set up, and he said to the guy who was, um, uh, who was behind the bar, he said, uh, have you got, any, um, you got any stories for me about Doncaster? I'd like to, you know, ingratiate myself into the audience by, uh, you know, making a little gag about, about the town. And the guy said, no, now, now it's been happening, it's Donny, isn't it? And he went, well, there must be something, something must have happened, didn't you? Know, must... He goes, well, now, you know, just, uh, well, someone nicked our telly last week. He went, great, that's it, fine, thanks very much. <laughs> so when he, start, he, come, he comes on stage to start the show, and his opening line to the, uh, to the Catholic men's club is to turn around and point at the crucifix of Jesus hanging on the wall and say, I see you got the bastard who nicked your telly. <laughs> And the legend has it, they ran him out of town. Um, I'll finish by, by just saying no, I'm, a, I'm a big Sherlock Holmes fan. And there's a, there's a Sherlock Holmes story where um, Holmes gets a bit too big for his boots and, and he makes a few arrogant claims which later prove to be, um, to be false. And he says to his, uh, his faithful sidekick, Watson, he said, he said, Watson, he said, next time I'm ever becoming too um, arrogant or cynical, um, would you whisper the word Norbury in my ear, please? This is the name of the, of the story they were in. And, uh, and, and for myself, I would just like to say and offer this to you as well. If, uh, if ever you find yourself becoming too cynical or critical of, of Brighton, just ask someone to whisper the word Doncaster in your ear. Thank you very much.